I believe Bennett is the unknowing custodian of the Pyronosis, as well as the former lava walker and blessed by the phoenix of the Mare Javari, and here's why. We've seen since the start of Genshin that Bennett is infamous for his terrible luck, and it's something that nobody can explain, as well as something that can't seem to be remedied. I was goofing around with my friend recently, and long story short, I said that Pyro Archon Benny is canon and the Fatui want his Gnosis. Gnosis are said to bring bad luck and destruction, so it could explain why Bennett has horrible luck. I said it as a joke, but then it hit me. What if Bennett's terrible luck is actually due to the Pyro Gnosis bringing him misfortune? After meeting Skirk at the end of the Masquerade of the Guilty Archon quest, she tells Nouvellet to get rid of the Hydronosis, stating, Regardless, you should probably get rid of objects of misfortune, to prevent any disasters from befalling you. Note how she specifically says from befalling you, and not the people around you or from befalling Fontaine. The intense bad luck Bennett constantly faces could genuinely be attributed to him holding the Pyronosis, but then we ask, how did Bennett get the Pyronosis? This leads us to the story of the Phoenix and the Lava Walker. For those who don't know about him, the Lava Walker was a sage who was able to easily enter and explore the Mare Javari, thanks to a circlet that he built that allowed him to resist fire. He became an outcast due to the people around him believing the circlet to be blasphemous. Because of this, his teacher ordered him to enter the fire of the Mare Javari while wearing his circlet, expecting him to burn up. But he was able to withstand the flames, and he just continued walking until he disappeared on the horizon. If you don't remember what the Mare Javari is, it has many descriptions throughout the game, but the loading screen info describes it as an endless plain of ash where the wind does not blow. In Nahida's description, she calls it a place without anything at all, completely empty, just like a shroom boar's brain. It's a bit of a curious description because the Lava Walker set described the Mare Javari as being home to a phoenix that can be heard singing in the flames. It even mentions that it was worshipped by the locals and seen as a sign of nobility. So between the tale of the Lava Walker and the other accounts of the Mare Javari in the game, which describe it as being a completely empty land, where did the phoenix go? So here's one part of my theory. I believe the phoenix was a familiar of the Pyro Archon. As the god of war, the Pyro Archon Murata may have wished to even the playing grounds by secretly removing her gnosis. Perhaps knowing the nature of the gnosis, she entrusted it to the phoenix, who then made its way to the Mare Javari to live in solitude, where it could essentially tank any misfortune that came its way at the hands of the gnosis. I mean, what better to counter misfortune than a being known to essentially never fully die? If any disaster were to befall the phoenix, it would simply be reborn in this land that's devoid of life, safe from anything interfering with the gnosis. And from there, it would just continue this endless cycle of misfortune, guarding the Gnosis, dying, being reborn, and repeat. From here, the Lava Walker enters the stage. He was described on multiple accounts as being incredibly clever and wise. Keep this in mind for later. It's said that that was how he was able to construct his circlet. An unknown time after entering the Mare Javari, the Lava Walker came into contact with the Phoenix and plucked one of its feathers. He then wore the feather and remained within the Mare Javari, and from there, it said, Since then, people often hear cries coming from the Mare Javari. No one knows if they are the song of the bird or the size of the lava walker. What's important to note is that A, the phoenix is never mentioned again after this passage, and B, the people outside the Mare Javari became unable to distinguish the sound of the phoenix and the lava walker, which is really curious considering how the lava walker was likely a normal person. I believe that the phoenix somehow merged with the lava walker when he received its feather. I'll touch on what I think caused this in just a little bit, but I did come to this conclusion because throughout the remainder of the lava walker set, as I said before, there's no more mention of the phoenix and the lava walker went on to live an unnaturally long life. This is highlighted in the Sands piece description, talking about how he desperately tried to keep track of time, but it just endlessly flowed forward. Saying, sadly, though the lava walker did not fear the scorching flames of the Mare Javari, he could not quench the torturing flames of time. The anguish of being left alone without the disciples and family he held so dear burned away at his soul more than any flames could ever scorch his flesh. With these lines paired with the casual mention of him spending, quote, another 100 years living as a hermit, 
implying he spent at least 100 years prior crossing the Mare Javari. It's definitely made clear that this man's lifespan was unnaturally increased, definitely pointing towards some manner of blessing or curse being put on him. Okay, the last details I want to bring up before getting back to Bennett are the goblet and flower piece stories. It once again talks about the incredible ideas and wisdom of the lava walker and describes him as having a grand epiphany before setting off on his final journey. He ventures outside and tells the people about a flower that blooms in the flames. When they follow the light of the flower to the edge of the Merjavari, it is said that the lava walker had vanished. So what does all of this mean and what does it have to do with Bennett? In Bennett's character story too, it tells the story of how he was found as a baby, when an adventurer made his way through a treacherous domain, most likely the Merjavari, and arrived at the end covered in horrible burns. All he found there was a lonely baby who seemed to have been abandoned by the world itself. He considered Baby Bennett to be his treasure for making it through the domain, and took him back to Mondstadt, where he eventually died of his wounds and left Baby Bennett to the Adventurer's Guild. So here's how my theory ties together. The Phoenix took the Pyronosis to the Mare Javari for safekeeping. The apparently very wise and intelligent Lava Walker safely entered the domain, met the Phoenix, and received its blessing. From then on, the sounds of the phoenix and the lava walker became indistinguishable to the people who could hear sounds coming from outside, possibly due to them somehow merging. After at least 200 years in the Mare Javari, the lava walker has an epiphany, which is not shared with the audience. But what we do know is that he brought the attention of fire flowers to the people outside as a symbol of his life and then vanished afterwards. Then, sometime following, Baby Bennett was found all alone at the end of that treacherous domain. The most likely case for Baby Bennett being there all alone and unscathed is for him to be the rebirth of the Lava Walker in Phoenix, unknowingly harboring the Pyronosis within. He was then taken home to Mondstadt by the adventurer where he grows up with comically terrible luck, which, as I mentioned in the beginning, is likely caused by the disastrous misfortune a Gnosis brings to its keeper. Outside the info from Skirk, the Lava Walker set, and Benny's character stories, there are a few other bits of info and lore that can point towards this overall theory. So I'll explain those and the second half of my theory. From here, I'm going to be looking at Travail and the description of the Agnidus Agate Gemstone. In the 2020 Travail trailer, most of the titles of quest lines in each Archon quest are listed as they preview each nation, alongside a short description from the plotline by Dainsliff. In the segment that focuses on that line, we see the title Incandescent Ode of Resurrection. Below it is an in-game script that translates into this Latin phrase, which in English is Rise, O strong man, and go to your destined victory. While these texts are shown, Dainsliff can be heard saying, The rules of war are woven in the womb. The victors shall burn bright, while the losers must turn to ash. When the god of war shares this secret with the traveler, it is because she has her reasons. In the original Chinese text, this line is said in a way akin to, The losers are reduced to embers, while the victors are reignited in those embers. It carries more of a, The loser falls and the winner is reborn from them kind of feel, which could be the case of what happened with the lava walker and phoenix and could explain how it is that they merged. In the Agnidus Agate Gemstone tab, we have this description that reads, A pilgrimage for a wish, a battle to earn a name, burnt to cinders for a dream. If the intention yet remains, achieved Redacted's truth, he has. All of these gemstones are narrated by their respective archons, and each gives a really vague hint at something related to their story arc. This one is pretty tough because it's worded so strangely, so the redacted bit could potentially be anything from some Celestia or Hexenzirkel related name, the Phoenix's name, or even the Pyro Archon's name. It's pretty unclear and there isn't really much to go on, but what is fascinating about this particular gemstone is that it's the only one that is talking about a separate and distinct individual from the Archon the entire time. And also, it's specifically referring to a man. I would have naturally assumed the character mentioned was the Notlan Travail character, but Anson is a girl, so who is the Pyro Archon talking about here? My assumption is that Oh Strong Man and the Gemstone Guy are two different people, and I'll explain why. 
So with the gemstone description, you can nicely fit the lava walker into the mold. It could be argued that the people outside the Mergevari revered the phoenix partly for its resilience to the flames, thanks to fire being so deeply important to Natlan culture, you know, as every nation values their respective element. Wishing to conquer such limitations and stand on equal grounds with the phoenix in the fires of the Mergevari, the lava walker crafted the circlet, which led to the people around him growing jealous and afraid. Following the description of the gemstone, the pilgrimage could have been his journey through the Mergevari to find the phoenix, with his wish being to conquer the flames, to face the phoenix, or both. The mentioned battle could either be a physical one between himself and the phoenix, or a more metaphorical battle of his pilgrimage through the fire. The phoenix's dream coincided with the protection of the pyronosis, and it ultimately believed the lava walker to be worthy of receiving it in some form. Considering the wisdom and intelligence frequently told of the Lava Walker, I assume the two were in on the Phoenix's plan, with the Lava Walker doing everything he could over the next few hundred years to bring this plan to fruition. So, in the end of the Lava Walker's journey, they were both turned to cinders for the sake of their dream. If the intention yet remains, achieved Redacted's truth he has. Assuming the Redacted name is the Phoenix, the Pyro Archon may have said this line hoping that the Phoenix's intentions persisted in the new rebirth. Rise, O oh strong man, and go to your destined victory. This line comes across as the climax of the Archon quest, with someone rising up, maybe even from the flames, and winning the massive war over Natlan. O oh strong man, rising to achieve his destined victory, could be Capitano, known as the strongest man in the world, who is said to have thrown himself into the war of Natlan. If the intention yet remains, achieved the phoenix's truth he has. If the phoenix took the pyronosis for safekeeping, what reason would the pyro archon have to give it away? While I believe she gave away the gnosis to allow for a fair war for all, whether or not the gnosis's absence is shared knowledge with the people of Notlan, I'm not so sure. I don't even know if common people know what a gnosis is. A human throwing themselves into a war with other human beings is one thing, but assuming that the people of Natlan actually do know what a gnosis is, imagine a human coming to the final battle and facing the gnosis-wielding god of war, an archon of fire. It's just not something I can imagine most people would willingly do. But maybe that's the point. Similar to the normal human lava walker, using his wit to create a way to allow him to enter the fires of the Mergevari and face the phoenix, who would be more worthy of taking on the Pyro Archon, and in turn, maybe taking her place as leader of Natlan, than someone who believed themselves to be capable of actually winning against all odds. The phoenix bore a dream and shared a truth, that O oh, strong man is destined to victory. If the intent of the phoenix and lava walker still remains, then maybe the gnosis was hidden away so well so that nobody, not even the pyro archon, could find it if they wanted. And ultimately, it would be up to that unknowing custodian to find their way back and return the gnosis to whoever earned it. So to tie everything together, here's what I'm thinking. The phoenix had a dream of the winner of the Great War in Natlan. It shared this info with the Pyro Archon, who keeps this secret and entrusts the phoenix with the Gnosis to avoid misfortune and to bring fairness to her beloved war. The Lava Walker later receives the blessing of the phoenix, with both of them being reborn as Bennett in the Mare Javari, where he's taken back to Mondstadt, unknowingly harboring the Pyronosis and bringing him crazy misfortune. In Natlan, the people are in a massive war which the Fatui Harbinger Capitano, known as the strongest man in the world, has also entered. The phoenix's dream and spoken truth will come to pass, with Capitano rising up and winning the war. If the original intentions of the Gnosis Keepers remains, Bennett will return to the victor, carrying the Pyronosis to be passed on to its new owner, freeing Bennett from his bad luck and giving the Fatui yet another Gnosis. So that's the end of my theorizing, but I do want to touch on some more lore that further makes me trust the idea that Bennett is holding the Pyronosis and is connected with the Phoenix and Lava Walker. Firstly is the name of his constellation and his C6. Titled Rota Calamitous, his constellation name translates to Wheel of Misfortune. I talked about why I believe the phoenix originally had the pyronosis, and how I felt it trapped the phoenix in an endless cycle of disaster, or Wheel of Misfortune, while carrying and protecting the gnosis. This cyclical concept revolving around Bennett's misfortune also feels like it could be a nod to the cycles of rebirth in a phoenix. Furthermore, his C6 is titled Fire Ventures With Me, and it buffs Pyro and grants the power of Pyro to the people around him with close-range weapons. 
While elemental imbues are also seen in Chongyun and Candace, and you could argue that maybe it's just a normal ability for vision wielders, I find the title particularly fascinating. It's worded in such a way that it doesn't come off as, I'm bringing fire wherever I go, but rather the fire as a separate, independent entity is traveling with Bennett. Fire ventures with me, like how you could say Klee ventures with me. It's worded in a way that is separate from Bennett, and I feel that it could point back to him carrying the pyronosis and the phoenix within him. Common associations with phoenixes are fire, rebirth, and healing. And while Bennett's kit doesn't focus on revival, his ult, as pretty much everyone knows, has a pretty strong healing factor to it. And funny enough, his ult applies pyro to everyone who stands in it without burning them, which feels kind of reminiscent of the lava walker. Then paired with this massive strength boost that comes from his circle of fire, it may be a nod to the Pyronosis granting strength. Another fun detail is Bennett's Windbloom love poem from the first Windbloom event. He wrote, You and the Mayor Javari, so close and yet so far, one at the edge of the world, the other in the center of my heart. Wolf Hook and Dandelion, my Windbloom offering to you. While the general consensus when this poem came out was that it was for his fathers, there are a few big details about it that make me just want to pick it apart. After all, one of the other poems we read during this event was a huge lore drop that Kaya spoke Hilly Charlian. We already knew he was associated with Conria, but if memory serves, it was one of the first event-related lore drops that Conria and the Hilly Charles were connected. So that said, maybe there was some deeper hidden lore meaning in Bennett's poem, or maybe not. But either way, the main points I want to touch on are in lines 1 and 4. It starts by mentioning this unknown you with the Mayor Javari, which is likely the place of his birth. He carries fragments of the Mayor Javari in him eternally, and while that place is on the other side of the world for Mondstatters, it is also right inside of him, carrying the Phoenix, the Lava Walker, and the Pyronosis. He specifically mentions it being in the center of his heart. And where do the Fatui Harbingers reach when they're trying to steal a Gnosis from the Archons? Somewhere in the chest. In Scaramouche's teaser, he even commented on losing the Gnosis, saying, once more, I have lost my heart. And funny enough, in the original Chinese, the Gnosis is called the Heart of God. This mention of something related to the Mare Javari being in the center of Bennett's heart could be a fun nod to him harboring the Gnosis within. So that said, you could say Bennett's love poem was just comparing his love for adventure and his love for being home with family and friends as two equally powerful yet contrary feelings, but I can't help but feel amused by the potential connections the poem could have with my theory. Anyway, if you made it to the end, thanks for listening to my rambling, and I hope you found this as amusing as I did. Um, also, please don't share any leaks in the comments. I heard that there were some big Natlan leaks just the other week, and I don't want to know them, even if they're relevant to this topic. Anyway, please know that these theories on Bennett and Not Lawn are all just for fun. I've played Genshin since release, and I've had so many theories on the lore, all of which I was confidently and completely incorrect about. While I may not be right about this one, I just love theories that have some sort of tie-in with existing lore, even if they seem super far-fetched. So whether this theory is right or wrong, only time will tell. But what I can share is this very situationally appropriate and accurate line from the lyrics of the Scaramouche boss theme. <laughs>